Mongoose is a networking library for embedded devices. It helps to make devices connected with a little effort. Let's talk about some practical use cases. A use case number one. Imagine you have a local network, a wireless or wired, and your task is to implement a web-based UI. For example, to make a web-based PLC, or industrial gateway, or some sort of consumer device. If this is your task, then Mongoose is a perfect solution. Use case number two. A setup is pretty similar to the first one. So you have a local network, but your task is to enable device remote control through an automation system. Usually this is done by implementing a web server on a device side with specific REST API. For example, to change device settings or reboot or do an over-the-air update and so on. And the third use case is when you need to implement remote control or data upload not from a local network, but from internet. For example, your device is a sensor and you need to upload data to a cloud database. In this case, you need to use MQTT protocol. In this use case, your device is not directly visible to you because you could be anywhere on internet. And now a couple of quick facts about Mongo's library. It's on the market since 2004. Now it's used by hundreds of businesses. It's used by NASA. For example, it runs on the International Space Station. Using Mongoose makes it more secure for businesses. Building from scratch or by modifying SDK examples is a source of bugs and security issues. And using Mongoose makes it faster to market. So now let's switch to the actual example. We are going to use a Nucleo F746 development board. So here we have it, it's connected to the Ethernet and it's connected to the workstation. And we are going to use Kyle as an IDE. This video has a written reference. If you go to mongoose.ws, tutorials, and then Nucleo F746 plus Kyle plus RTX. You can find here a detailed description and code references. We are going to build a web UI dashboard on this development board uh, using Kyle, and we'll do it step by step. First, we create a new project. Let's create a new directory for it. Call it dash. And let's call the project dash. Uh, choose STM32F746. ZG is our microcontroller. Uh, we select board support LED or LED blinking for status. CMSYS core. Uh, we need we need device startup and STM cube classic. Now we click on Resolve to resolve all references and click OK. Now we need to add a main file, add new item, C file, main.c. Here we have it. And add the following code. So what this code does, it simply initializes the board, initializes LEDs and turns the LED number two, which is a red LED on, and then it falls into infinite loop. Select options, debug, we choose a stealing debugger. Click on settings, enable download to flash. And here in flash download, enable reset and run. Click OK. In the target tab, Enable use microlib and that's pretty much it. Click on build and load. Now we see that the board has a red LED turned on. So which means the firmware works. So let's continue on to step number two. 
in this step, we are going to add RTOS support and uh, create a blinking task. Later on, we'll, we'll turn that blinking task into a web server task. Let's enable additional components. Go to CMSYS, RTOS2, and enable Kyle RTX5. Okay. So then open startup stm 32 f 746 xxs file, which is a startup file. And by default, heap size is set to a very small value. So let's increase it to 64K. Okay, so save it. Let's update the code. What we did, we have included cmsys os2 header file. Uh, we added the os kernel initialization function. So we created a stack on a heap, like four kilobyte stack that should be enough for our web server. Uh, and we started a new thread, a new task. So uh, with this function, my task. And this task initializes LEDs, turns a red LED on, then it blinks LED number one, which is a blue LED. So let's see how it works. Here again, click on build and click on load. Now we see that it starts to blink a blue LED. So that means that our code works. Okay, so let's move to the next step, which is a system clock update. So by default, this board runs at 16 megahertz and we want to run it on a maximum speed of 216 megahertz. So for this, we just create a new file uh, let's call it init.c and in this file we add clock init code. So now we have two files main.c and init.c and to the main function we add two extra lines. So basically to call this system clock config function. Okay, again, let's build and upload the code. So the board continues to blink, which is good. So and now we are running at maximum speed. The next step is to add networking. Go to network, enable core, enable BSD socket, TCP, and UDP. And in the interface, set the Ethernet count to 1. Go to CMSYS driver and enable Ethernet MAC driver and Ethernet Phi driver. So on this board, we have LAN 8742A. So enable that too. Okay. Update main.c file. We add include RL underscore net and networking API. And here we add one function called net initialize. Now we need to open RTE device click on configuration wizard here and we need to enable ethernet here it is let's enable it and make sure the configuration is correct so this board uses rmii interface and the settings should be like this one pg13 pb13 PG11, and the rest is correct. Again, build, and upload. So the board continues to blink, which is good. And now we have our board running network stack, but it doesn't have any application that uses that network. So let's add an application. So let's add mongoose library and implement a very very simple basic web server without any dashboard first there are two ways to add mongoose library to your project first is to use a cow pack if we go to the pack installer we can find mongoose here so it's a santa mongoose and the other way is to directly download two files from mongoose repository and this way you can get the latest version so open your browser, go to github to santa slash mongoose, 
click on mongoose.h, that's the header file, click on raw, so click on save as, and choose documents dash, we download it as header file, save, and we also save mongoose.c file. So same thing, save as C file. So now let's add these two files to our source files. Add existing files, add mongoose.c and mongoose.h as well. Okay, so we have added mongoose. Now right click on source group one options, C, C++, and add an extra compilation flag that enables RTX support in Mongoose library. So let's add a define mg underscore arch equals mg arch RTX. And update the code slightly. So here we added uh, mongoose.h include a, an uptime function, a callback function. So basically this function for every HTTP requests, it responds with hi message. And in our task code, what we did, we have added the mongoose event manager structure, initialized it, opened a listener on port 80 with the given event handler function. And in the infinite loop, we've changed the delay function to uh, mongoose poll function. So basically, uh, this little piece of code enables a web server, which simply responds with the high message to every HTTP request. Let's build and upload. So again, the board continues blinking. That means that our code is working. So now our board, when it boots, it gets the IP address from the DHCP server on the Ethernet network. And then it opens a, a web server on port 80. Now we need to find out what IP address our board has. So we can uh, either uh, ping a broadcast address or just take a look at the ARP table on the router. So I'm on the router right now, and now I see. So uh, the IP address is 192.168.22.22. So let's open. So we see a high message printed. So that means our web server is working and it it's very simple. It's very basic. You can enhance this handler function the way you want you can respond with different responses on uh, different URIs and so on. But what we are going to do, we are, on this step, we're going to add a web UI uh, to uh, this server, and we are going to use an existing example that already has a, a pre-built uh, dashboard. You can find it on Mongoose repository. So if you go to examples, device dashboard, so this is a device dashboard that we are going to use. So the dashboard is protected by a login with multiple users with multiple uh, privileges. And when a user logs in, it's presented with the screen, which allows to see the device current device configuration, which allows administrators to change that configuration and uh, for multiple logged in user to chat. So uh, this chat is just to demonstrate that the dashboard can do a bi-directional uh, real-time communication. So from this device dashboard project, we're going to use two files. First file is web.c. So let's uh, save it the same way. Web.c. And the second file is packedfs.c. So this packedfs is is a C file with the embedded uh, UI. So 
Now let's add these two files into our to our project. We add back to FAS and we add web.c. So and instead of our uh, event handler function, we need to use uh, the handler function from this web.c file. Another thing we need to do is to enable a packed file system support. Go to options, C, C++, and add another flag, minus D and G, enable FS equals one. Okay. Build and upload. Okay, so now uh, our board runs a dashboard. Let's check it out. We'll refresh this page. And we have the login screen. Let's log in as administrator. Admin, that's zero. So here we are. 